This is it, the MasterChef Finals. We're looking for a great amateur cook who can make it as a professional. Someone who can turn out exceptional food. Yeah, it does, it feels great to be in the final three, absolutely. It's kind of surreal to be in the final three. This is one tough competition. I'm going to give it my best shot, so yeah, bring it on. Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. Andy, Christopher and Matt are the MasterChef finalists. During the finals, they'll cook at a level that would terrify even hardened professionals. I scared stiff. I don't know if I'm going to get it done. There's no time to spare, and we really have to just go 100 miles an hour. Today, these three talented amateurs travel to the remote highlands of Scotland. Here, they'll have to cook under the most basic army field conditions. For one of Britain's proudest regiments. Right, guys, they'll be up here in about two minutes. This isn't a five-star kitchen. <laughs> then it's a trek back to Army HQ to cook an exquisite regimental dinner. There's a lot to do, so, yeah, I'm a bit worried, yeah. Right, these guys are waiting to be fed at yeah. 8 o'clock. You better get motivated well, and get across there. My objective here is to win it, and if and I won't be happy with anything less. And if I can't believe that I've got a good chance of winning it, then, then I shouldn't be here. There's a lot more pressure because it is the final. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot more competitive now. I'm well up for it. It was great to be in the final three. I'm only going to get one opportunity like this, and now I'm here, I'm determined to make the most of it. Expectations are sky high, because one of these three will be crowned MasterChef champion. It's 7 a.m. Matt, Chris and Andy are travelling to a remote part of the Scottish Highlands. Here, 30 soldiers from the Black Watch 3rd Battalion of the Royal Regiment of Scotland are nearing the end of a week's gruelling training. The finalists will have to feed them, working under extreme cooking expert, Staff Sergeant Kevin Strachan. At the present, we've got 30 guys out in the hills. You three will be responsible for ensuring that they get a hot meal provided for them in two hours from now. Crack on. Each of the finalists will have to create two mains and a dessert using nothing but basic army rations. Oh, this is so much stuff. Keep it simple. Yeah, yeah. All they'll have to cook on is an open fire and a makeshift oven made from an oil drum. For these guys to be great cooks, they've got to understand how to adapt to their environment. This is pressure. This is cooking like they have no chance of experience back at home. I'm not really the camping type normally, but uh, at the moment I'm just going to see exactly what I have and haven't got before I... Uh, start making a plan. Civil servant Christopher is the youngest finalist. So far, he's amazed with his natural cooking instincts. This is a plate full of food which shows culinary intelligence. There's something quite interesting about this cook, for sure. But a lack of experience means his food doesn't always deliver. The pasta was slightly hard in places, and therefore not as perfect as it might have been. For me, it just all needs a bit more seasoning. Today, can Christopher avoid mistakes and produce food the soldiers want to eat? One course I was going to do cottage pie, and then for the veggie option, I was going to do spicy pasta bake. Perfect. And yeah. then for pudding, I was going to have a bash at doing um, rice pudding, 
Fingers crossed, it'll be alright. Yeah, good. Well done. Thanks. First impression's a little bit daunting. Kind of cooked for myself in the bush, but I've never cooked for uh, 30 people, so yeah, different scale. Father of three, Matt, loves foraging for ingredients and dreams of a family-run restaurant serving his rustic, hearty food. That chicken is moist and packed full of flavour. But a lack of subtlety and finesse can be his undoing. The appearance of an oyster thrown on top of a steak. It was like a really giant bogey. Today, he'll be cooking chilli con carne, pasta bake, and a chocolate sponge pudding. That's the sort of food I'd want if I was out here, so hopefully that's the sort of food the boys are wanting. All the ingredients are just totally foreign. They, you know, they don't look like normal food, so it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a real challenge. So far, comeback contestant Andy has impressed with some great plates of food. I think he's got the tuna cooked just perfectly. I think it's really most successful. It works. But at times, a lack of focus and attention to detail has let him down. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Really is a bit sloppy. OK. Help me. How are you getting on? I'm going to do uh, pasta with tuna and sweet corn. We've already got a tent. All they're doing is tuna pasta bake. Oh, really? All right, so... OK. You're going to have to look at changing that or adapting it. OK. Uh, how about doing a pasta and a white sauce? OK, yeah, that works for me, yeah. And then chilli con carne. There's a tent doing that already. Well, right, well, um, there's no question doing two chilies, even though mine would be nicer than theirs. I'm afraid you can't. To have the two main things I thought of out of the question just adds a bit of extra pressure and like, I've, I've already, um, you know, time's running away, so I, I really need to get on and make a decision. Half an hour after the others, Andy finally decides on his menu. The thing about doing like beef stew with some potatoes and carrots. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. fine, yeah. There's now just an hour until the troops arrive. When these guys come down from the hills, they are going to be very, very hungry. This has got to be good food, it's got to be big food, and it has got to be on time, cos I wouldn't want to be the cook who is not delivering their lunch. Matt's first to get his ingredients prepped. I think Matt has a terrific menu. I think that chilli con carne and rice, and then the sponge with the chocolate custard, I think that's great. He's got lots of things going on that stove. It doesn't seem to have much going on in the oven. Just trying to get things hot which takes quite a bit of time. And then once I've got them hot, figuring out ways to keep them hot. And keeping one eye on the time. Christopher seems the one who's very, very calm. I think it's a false sense of security. I don't think he's ready yet. I think he just thinks he is. Do you know that, yeah? Yeah, thanks, mate. I hope that Andy gets his food up in time. That guy has got serious issues. John, he's likely to have nothing, nothing ready. I've got a lot to do. I've got a few things on. I need to start using the oven, because at the moment, everything's on the fire pit. And if it starts raining, it could be a real blow to the uh, prospects of having anything cooked. Out in the hills, with the weather that we've had lately, they'll definitely be very hungry. So when they come back in, they'll be expected fed right on the dot, and they won't be expected to wait around. We've got 15 minutes. You need to start pulling your thumb out, yeah. picking up, picking up okay. the motion a bit. Understood. You're going to be ready? Yeah, I hope so, yeah. I want to hear positive, yes. positive. I'll be ready. I'll be there. Yeah? Yeah. Bye. Are you going to be ready? Yeah. That's got to go in the oven? Yeah, it's going in now. With his pineapple and strawberry sponge finally in the oven, Andy still has to prepare his pasta and finish his stew. He's got 15 minutes left to go. I mean, he is really, really going to struggle. But Andy's not the only one racing the clock. I haven't had as much time on the pasta as I'd like. 
How's your timing? Um, I'm just worried about the rice pudding. It's not doing a whole lot at the moment. It's the rice is still a bit chalky. Nothing brings down the morale of soldiers quicker than not feeding them. Right, guys, they're on their way in now. OK, they'll be up here in about two minutes. Tell me where you are and tell me what you need doing. Okay. The white sauce, I need to thicken that and add bacon to it. Uh, it's just boiling the pasta that needs to speed up. All right. Yeah, I, I'm nervous. Yeah. All right. Very nervous. Staff Sergeant Strachan is forced to step in to make the white sauce while Andy deals with the stew. One round. Meanwhile, Christopher's menu is ready to go. Matt has also finished his three dishes. But for Andy, it's down to the wire. Um, I've just got a little bit more to do. With seconds to spare, Andy's ready. It's now up to the troops to decide whose food appeals the most. Lovely chili and rice. Matt's chili con carne, pasta bake, and chocolate sponge are an instant hit. Yeah, chap, grab yourself a chocolate yep. bar. Chili and pasta had a bit of a mix. It's really good. Get well, pasta as well, please. Pasta, mate. It's going on. Hot cake. Having just finished in time, Andy's beef stew, pasta with white sauce, and strawberry sponge are also going down well. Hello, boss. Christopher's cottage pie, spiced veg pasta and rice pudding have failed to attract a solitary customer. Come on, guys, anyone for some cottage pie from the future winner of MasterChef? <laughs> Come on, guys, a bit of spice. I'll have some of your spicy. Yeah. Finally, with a bit of encouragement, some of the soldiers give it a try. Cheers. There you go, mate. Thanks so much for that. A bit of both, yeah. Cottage pie is lovely. Very nice. Never trust a thin chef. <laughs> <laughs> Kev, generally, are these guys British Army standard yet? But not far off. I'm surprised at what they accomplished. Tell us what strengths and weaknesses you see in young Christopher. He came across as more middle of the range, but then he wasn't really disorganised. He was like middle of the class. You know, I was pleased with what I did. It was just could have uh, could have done with selling a few more portions, really. Matt probably had the best food. He was just that little bit more, little bit more organised and a bit more get up and go, a bit more oomph about him. It's a bit of a challenge with the rations to do anything too fancy, but I, I think I did all right. Andy, I think just got flustered a bit and flapped a bit, and he just let the pressure get on top of him. I, I had a bad start today. I think perhaps the other two were maybe more composed throughout the whole task, but I think I pulled it together at the end. Which of our guys would you take into the field? I'll take Matt. into their day. The contestants must now travel back across the Scottish Highlands to historic Fort George, proud base of the Black Watch. It's been a good day, but I'm, I'm nervous about tonight, yeah. I, I, you know, and I want to show myself in a, in a really good light as well. I'm determined to do that. You know, I made some mistakes today and I've got to play catch up. I, you know, I've just got to focus on the job tonight and I think um, there's a lot more to play for. 
under the circumstances, I thought I, I performed fairly well. And uh, tonight, just going to you know knuckle down, try my hardest, and uh, hopefully come out top this time. Tonight in the officers' mess, there'll be a formal regimental dinner. Our finalists must design and cook three courses worthy of such an occasion. Keeping a close eye on their progress will be base head chef Mark McNeish. Right, guys, welcome to Fort George. Slightly different tonight. You're now cooking regimental dinner for 10 people. We're sitting down at 20 hundred hours. You need to do three courses. One course each, OK? You're going to be in charge. It's going to be your kitchen, OK? You two guys, work for them. All right, guys, any questions? Off you go and get changed. Using only what's available in the larder, the finalists have just two hours to design and cook a three-course menu under Christopher's leadership. Something that, um in my kind of regular life, not, not used to leading a group of people. So, yeah, you know, it's hard, it's tough, and, uh, yeah, there's a lot to do. So, yeah, I'm a bit worried, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. we, you could do small tarts or one big tart. I'll either do a pasta starter or we do yeah. a fish starter. I think, I think duck for duck would be yeah, the best idea. Main yeah, yeah, no, that's cool. Adding to the finalists' workload, Tonight's meal has to be cooked in not one, but two kitchens. Tonight is a logistical nightmare because prep the food here, then they've got to get the food across the forecourt and they've got to serve up in that little prep kitchen and the dining room. That is tough stuff. Uh, all the guests will be in here and they'll be sat there, wait for the starter. Yep. 20, 100 hours. OK. okay. They've already worked very, very hard out in the field and this is a completely different type of test. Now they're doing fine dining. Andy's devised a starter of pan-fried sea bream with roasted tomatoes and a fennel salad. After struggling to keep up this morning, can Andy keep on schedule? I'm doing the starter, though. I know it's really important to, um, to not delay the other guys and to get the dish out on time, so, yeah, that's one of the priorities. But I've got to get these green filleted and then I'll work on the, the vegetables and the sauce. Little fillets of sea bream, fennel salad, tomatoes, chilli dressing. As long as it's fresh, as long as it's perfectly cooked, it'll be a nice way to start off. Team leader Christopher is in charge of the main. Pan-fried duck with mashed potato, green vegetables and a salsa verde. Kind of got a serious timing issue tonight. You know, hopefully it will all turn out right. If not, it gets us on my head, so yeah, it's a bit of added pressure. Christmas in charge, we've got so much to do. It's about getting all those component parts across the other side, fresh, delicious and properly cooked. Matt's making the pudding. A dark chocolate pot with Chantilly cream and lavender shortbread. Chris is in charge, his choice. I'm happy to do dessert. It's not my forte, I guess. We know Matt's about rustic. How will he make Chocolate pots, lavender shortbread, Chantilly cream, and strawberries look beautiful. Twenty minutes before service, the guests arrive. From the military perspective, you know, these guys have got to be in time. You know, as soon as they're five, ten minutes late, the QM, flat watch, you look at his watch, he'll be wondering where the food is. He won't be a happy teddy. Chris is a leader. He's not really taking control of the other two guys. I'd really like to see a little bit more, you know, a bit management, you know, are you okay? How are you getting on? Providing the starter goes out in time. Yeah. You're looking at starter out, eight, 20 minutes, clearance, and then this going out about half past ten. Okay, yeah. Okay? Yeah. There's just so much stuff to do to actually then lead a team of people. This is literally just not enough time to do it all. Christopher's not taking charge. He has no idea how the start is getting on. He has no idea how the pudding is getting on. With just 15 minutes to go, Andy should now be in the other kitchen cooking his sea bream. 
Hey, Andy. Hey, hey. Listen, mate. You're now at quarter. Don't smile. You're now at quarter two. Okay. These guys are waiting to be fed at yep. eight o'clock. You better get motivated we'll and get across yep. there. Okay. Andy now has to cook and plate his starter on his own. Yeah, the pressure's definitely on now. Um, I know what I've got to do, so I've just got to really focus now. As he pan fries his fish, Andy's attention to detail has to be spot on. Okay, he's ready to go. Just three minutes late, Andy's starter goes out. He's made pan-fried sea bream on roasted tomatoes with a fennel salad and herb dressing. This is very good. Excellent, boys. It's spot on. It's, it's nice. The skin's really crispy and nice and salty. It's um, really good. Andy, from the, from the quartermaster, fantastic start. Oh, lovely. Thank you. That's great. Good start to the meal, so fingers crossed. Back in the main kitchen, Christopher is running behind. His main course should be ready to go to the mess kitchen, but he still has to pan fry the duck and finish the salsa verde for his vegetables. Yeah, pretty stressed out at the moment. There's still a massive amount of work to do with my dish, plus ferrying it across. I think there's going to be a major time problem with it at the moment. Ted fast. Let's get across that. He has no choice but to enlist help. Are you free now, Matt? Fairly, yes. I just don't want my biscuits to burn, obviously. Yeah, yeah. OK, let's go. Oh, boys, go and right. knock them dead, for God's sake. Do you know the way? There's a couple just going back in, because I think they just need a fraction more. Christopher may be team leader, but it's Andy who's taking charge. We need to get this one out pretty quick. We've got quite a few elements to combine for the main course, so um, it's definitely um, in a rush to, to get it out in time. If you come this side, Matt, then I'll, I'll send them down to you. Let's get this course out. Come on. You need to tap some of those plates and they're a little bit unwieldy. Service, please. Christopher's main finally makes it out with help from Andy and Matt. But will his dish of pan-fried duck with mashed potatoes and green vegetables dressed in a salsa verde be a success? Vegetables are nice and crispy. Nice texture to the mash. I enjoyed the way the Dutch cook. It was fantastic, and the mashed potato was fantastic as well. I think it could, could have really done me a nice jus sauce right. just to, to set it off. Finally, it's Matt's turn to impress. I'd expect those to be a bit more set by now, so, yeah, a little bit concerned about that. Matt, don't move your shortbread too fast, because it will just fall apart. Be patient with it, OK? What's the time like? It's ten minutes since the main's gone out. I think we'd have to move. No 
Looks really nice, guys. Thank you. Matt, let's get it out there. Yeah. Let me just Hello. check them. Yeah, good to go. Yes, yeah, service, please, guys. You gentlemen presented like that. 12 o'clock. What will the guests make of Matt's dessert? A dark chocolate pot with Chantilly cream, strawberries and shortbread. I hope they like it. They'll definitely will see it, that chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> when I first tasted the chocolate, it was like a bit bitter for me, but the sharpness of the strawberry almost kind of edges it away a wee bit. Very nice homemade biscuits. That's a cracking shortbread. That is lovely. That's why it's really nice. Your lovely eye. Very good. Well done tonight. Good effort. Everywhere. It's now your turn to go out there and face the music. Uh, gentlemen, uh, good evening. Thanks very much for, uh, for doing what you've done for us tonight. We were very privileged to taste the delights. Thank you very much, chefs. Well, we've reached the end of the first day of our finals and what a day it's been. An extraordinary experience, an extraordinary task. We are beginning to really hone in on these guys and find out what they are made of. Andy started off weak and ended up on top. Without Andy, I don't think they would have got that dinner out. Day of two halves, yes. This evening definitely went better than this morning and I felt good about the dish I produced and uh, good to uh, end on a high. Christopher started off the task in the field today and he was confident. And then tonight he was supposed to be the boss and he didn't take the lead. I don't think I've been number one today, so yeah, that's gonna play on my mind a little bit. But I'm just gonna, you know, keep working hard. When we put him in the field, Matt absolutely loved it. That guy understood the pressure, he understood the fast service, and he served food that the soldiers wanted to eat. And he came out on top. I've really enjoyed today, actually. Um, this morning, I think I did really well. This evening, I think my dish was good, and being in Scotland, they said the shortbread was some of the best they'd had, so I'll take that. They are absolutely exhausted, but they have learned a huge amount. If they think this is tough, wait for the next challenge. Next time, the finalists face their toughest challenge yet. Fucking house. As the exclusive caterers to the 450 strong royal household. Quite a bit of preparation to do. We really have to go 100 miles an hour. I don't know if I'm going to get done.